some memorabilia, you know, splattered around varying maps to commemorate different players. That is just good to see that Valorant is, we're, we're, we're near there. We're not too far away from that. And Sean is a little far away from this round as he's going to have to sit this one out. A quick push in left. there from Brax. He goes in alone. Genji, we're really focused on the A side of the map, but it's T1 that find a little bit more space and will now start to funnel their resources over towards that side. And once again, we saw this against Complexity. T1 perfectly okay with playing very slow early on and then making a hard hit. That's exactly what's going down here on the B site. The thing is, they don't even require much of a hard hit at all. Gen.G just down to two members left. Player one, very weak. So the, the hit, it, it can be like a, a sneeze at this point, and they're going to blow Gen.G over T1 in firm control. Flawless round for them means the economy stays exactly where they will the ground. Maybe playing contact on the sites themselves, but the rolling carpet is going to be rolled out. Win finds the early pick, escapes, and now Gen G forced to play the retake in an advantageous position. Yeah, very well played left. for him to get that pick and get away with his life was exactly what Gen G needed. Yeah, the spike is going to go down, but Gen G from a position of power are going to be able to fight back. The only thing is that T1 is establishing their post plant positions. Furthermore, you see the Sova rotating away on that anchor spot in case anyone catches around the flank. They're waiting for it. Wind's going to get a chance. Oh, no, Wind's no. going to get taken out. He gets CC'd and is completely taken care of. It's down to two for T1. Genji slowly but surely make their way onto the site. And really, it's off of the TF2 heavy Mikael with the Odin. Just walks in, takes him down. Win will make. He would have found... Brax looking at a camera, but now he's going to find himself in an engagement nonetheless. He's trying to smoke himself off to safety. The paranoia comes through. He's still being sprayed. He's still trying to get close. Oh. Holy smokes, an upshot to the dome. But they still, once again, the classic play from T1. Work their way through the middle and work their way through B main. They've got control, but it's temporary as Genji are coming for the retake. Yeah, it's going to be tough, though. They're all going to be coming from the same spot, fortunately for them. Nobody on T1 is going to be playing around that anchor spot, which means spike they're going to planted. be able to get through the middle just fine. The spike has been planted. It's going to be straight up 4v4. <laughs> Genji is going to have that Empress. So keep that in mind as a, as a possibility, uh, as a wrinkle to the plan, should they choose to go that way. You mentioned at the beginning of the round that Genji just needs one more to try to equalize the financial situation here. But it's a tough one. 20 seconds left. Time is ticking. Genji do this all the time. They play with fire. Time is of the essence. And that is the fifth player, the sixth player in the lobby. But unfortunately for them, so is Spider as they get caught in the web. The Venom strikes all down to player one. And Spider will take him down. He will unfortunately fall to the spike. All members on both sides will fall. As he's being cornered in here. And we're not looking at that same mid flank that we normally see, but player one is still able to find two picks, deny this push from T1, and gives Genji so much time to get onto the site. Player one, holy smokes, he stopped three. And now there's two more remaining. The paranoia from the side, Brax is still participating, but it's a 1v3, and he'll be taken down by the Knives of Win. I wish we saw some of that action towards Brax site all along. Yeah, and it didn't look like they bit very hard at all. They're still going to be win playing across the middle. And Sean this time left. is going to be one is the one who's able to take get an opening frag and buy time. The thing is, it still doesn't look like they know very much of what's going on. Now that's going to give the position away. Player one once again in an anchor spot gets one looking for a second. Oh, and yeah, baby, one. serve it up and give it to him once again in a position where he's going to be able to cause some serious problems for T1. However, AZK takes care of him once again. It's going to be a flank, however, from Skadoodle going through tree. He takes care of Sean, dashes his way wow. in. He's able to take care of Win as well. And not before Win joins in on the action. Skadoodle playing ring around the Rosie. Oh, he's able to get one, but he's only got two bullets left. He's going to have to reload a 1v1. He dashes oh away. God. He's got the blade oh. sword as well. It's good. Three through the food market and two towards b -Man. Yeah, it's a bit more aggressive of a defensive position from Sean here. He's going to get flashed up. Is still able to get one. He's going to reposition himself, but unfortunately dismisses right into the warm, welcoming left. arms of Brax, the leader for T1, Damn, able to take care way. of him. But Guimon, back behind the site, is able to get one. AZK trades it out. Win with the blades. Not able to do enough damage. Brax is going to be able to get the spike down. Members of T1 beginning to stack up. Right outside of A, drone's gonna come out, one's gonna spot it, blast it out. There's the follow-up to win once again. He's been pushed off many a time, but that's two or three rounds now, but Win has been able to make that bad boy sing early on and get an opening pick. 
Yeah, it's important for the confidence for Genji as well. T1 thought that they had all rotated those players out, but Genji anticipating maybe some shenanigans as the B site. There wasn't any action. After the utility was called, after all of that was played out, they anticipated, okay, well, we're not seeing anything. Let's just make sure that the A site is clear because they all ran away from it, right? At the moment that they realized the A site might be a potential hit, there was left. a player in defender spawn. That was the closest player towards the A site. So they needed to make sure that they could double back and now that T1 is actually interested in the A side, Genji have prepared themselves accordingly. T1 beginning to funnel in. This time it's going to be through three rooms. Sean's going to be there. He's able to take her one spot to another one going by, and he takes care of Skidoodle wow. in the flash. He's able to take care of AZK as well. T1's just down to Brax. He's got an operator. About the flank, while T1 have membership towards the fruit market and towards the alleyway leading towards the defender spawn. Genji are stuck. There is a player playing point, Mikael, anticipating a potential flank, but Brax decides against it. So there's a player playing B main while the rest are on site. T1 have a difficult job ahead. Now Sean's going to see a couple of members coming through. He's going to dismiss out. So much space gathered. They're going to take them apart one at a time. AZ cable trade. So will Daze, but the spike is ticking, and they need to start the defuse. There's a player that hops out. It's win, and it's down to the 1v1. Brax versus win. They end up in a 1v1, but both get eradicated by the spike. We thought they were going to push in. Where did they go? Oh, no gonna be oh, a little no. bit of a tougher spot. It's unfortunate for T1. Yeah, look around. It's win. There's one more player left. Genji played that so well. Even though it was the eco for T1, they played that so incredibly well. And then to add a little bit more backstory for you, T1 came out of the gate swinging. Genji has brought it close. And it's because of stuff like that. Win has come online. It was a slow startup against Complexity. But he has certainly found his footing as he gets the opening pick in the round. Days, unfortunately, Tony Montana would not be proud of that Odin play. He does not get the spray that he was looking for. T1 still just trying to hold on to the site, but unfortunately, Brax, once again, as far from the action as the eye can see. Genji will be able to get the spike planted, but Spider's got other plans in store. Little does he know when playing on that 50 angle towards the archway there. But the fact that he's been smoked off is going to give Win an opportunity to switch locations if he wants to. But he's going to hold that one down. Genji just going to wait for the spike to time out. As for some reason, Brax is still on the catwalk. Maybe he... Before, it's looking good for Genji. It started out rough, but they started to really come online. As you highlighted, when the person leading the charge at the moment has been a, a, a prime factor of it, but Skadoodle's going to tell him to sit down. It was traded by Sean, but they still made their way onto the site. He also is one point away from the blade storm. Narrowly misses that shot. AZK is able to get one with a bit of utility as well. As the spike goes down, they try to fight through heaven this is a brutal way to retake this site as we've seen time and time again but so far so good for t1 Mikael on the flank not able to get a very important kill that leaves player one the last one standing folks we've seen player one pull off insane heroics before this time he's gonna get tagged up he's gonna get spotted the tripwire was there fortunately but Okay, they do know he's there. He's able to get one. Give him yeah. the second. Drop things down to a 1v1, but the defuse is coming up. He's going to have to go aggressively. Skadoodle's able to get it to halftime. Skadoodle goes up and player one brings him back down. Oh, Daze. He's just trying to play contact, and he's going to get sprayed. The shock dart did not help, and the dismiss helps out Spider. Holy smokes, Sean was just trying to be the eyes for Gen G, but it's still the advantage that they have. Spike being planted, and once again, Spike T1 planted. are back in this retake position. Unfortunately, it's only Brax. It's only AZK, but a 2v3 possible here for T1. Possible but difficult. Note the Rolling Thunder as a resource for AZK, and sure enough, thank you to the Observers, they cut over to him, tries to get a little bit of info, not doing quite yet, player one's going to be on the flank as well, but it may not matter, Sean is able to take care of AZK, Brax, the last one standing, trying to create some space, and again, box Genji in, but they have plenty of routes to get out as well, they're going to get away, Brax might even, oh, you might get one here, nope, T1 have plenty of ultimates to work with, right? Genji goes aggressive and tries to get onto the insight. The Hunter Fury is going to be traded in kind from both of the Sovas. Nobody has gone down yet. A bit of information was gathered, but all lives still preserved. Max holding down hell. He's going to get a chance on the win. He's able to take care of him, and the Neural Theft will give everything away.
Man, that's, Brax doing a, a player one cosplay there, just holding down. Let's see if he can find a couple more picks. He does get one wade, at least for the time being. He's just trying to survive. But unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. Tony Montana drops down his dazed. He's going to be taken down by Sean. But somehow, D1 able to answer back. ACK having a frenzy up above. But Sean is a factor. He is always a factor. 40 seconds remain. Sean trying to push forward. There's an op on the opposite side. First shot's not going to connect, but the spike's in a tough spot. Skadoodle finds the shot. Close indeed, and Wynn trying to get a little closer to the opposition as he tailwinds forward. A standard setup here for Gen G, but when you've got Daze, the turret just mowing down the entryway, it's difficult for Gen G to survive. It's all down to Wynn in a 1v3. And it is possible, but he's paranoid at the current moment, trying to use the cloud smoke to give himself some space. Genji with win as the tip of the spear. Are looking to establish control on B. Smokes go down, Wing goes up, he dashes forward, he sees one, and he's met by the cold bullet of an operator from Skadoodle. Skadoodle's still trying to hold that down and keep things at bay as he's just getting pushed around. The smokes, there's what? nobody in there through the smoke anyway. Are you kidding me? Skadoodle does it again. Of course it's Skadoodle. Uh, who else would be able to pull such a feat off? Genji still have to get that spike down. It is in the hands of player one, but they know Skadoodle is in the cave and you don't want to poke the bear who's hibernating back there. Skadoodle. Now we're going to have to deal with the closeness of player one. He does have a phantom, so he swapped off with the powerful weapon. The spike is now down. This is going to be a little bit of a tougher spot. Tailwind's out. Gimon looking for him, but there's two. Back and see how that was executed, because I'm still a little dumbfounded. What was the change that was necessary Yikes. for T1 to find opportunities like that? What were they reading on the Gen G movement? Because now it's just down to two, just down oh, to one. Wow. It's player one against an army of T1. And the recon ball is not going to make it any easier here because they don't have any reps on this during the qualifier, the open qualifier, or the close qualifier for that matter. Skadoodle trying to play this tight corner. Nice. Yeah, he doesn't know who's there. He don't know who's there. Yeah, he gets one. He gets the second one as well. It's a bloodbath. Skadoodle's down to 11 health. He's going to dash away and gets away with his life. He needed the help. He's still alive. Days was just there to try to support him, but he will end up falling down to the 3v3. You love to see that support. Skadoodle hides in the 50. Days says, there's no one here. I'm the only one here. I'm running away. But still, they bring it down to a 3v3. Paranoia to help out with the player backside. They drop down. They take out win, and that's actually going to help out immensely. But player one is still alive. And now it's all down to him. 16 HP backside. Prax through the smoke. That's what I'm talking about. T1 answer back. It's an expensive round. The heroics from Skadoodle pay off. In between all the smokes, that camera was left. there to essentially negate that play, but it finally gets cleared out. Genji are going to get onto the site. Player one and win have already taken out two. The neural theft is there as well to give them information. And Genji cause a bunch of ruckus on B and then rotate over to C. Yeah, they did have Gimond over there playing point. Skadoodle's going to find a pick of some of those members rotating off of the B site. So now it's a 3v3. Oh, Win misses such a crucial shot. Now the Blade Storm comes up. Win's just trying to run and hide. Play ring around the Rosie, but Spider's there to accept him with his open yeah, arms. Mikael now the last player standing. They still need to defuse the spike. Spider finds out where the last player is located, and the paranoia is unfortunately deadly. They do trade. But still, T1 manages to find a round. And from what we thought initially, Genji starting off to a hot start, T1 have been able to bring it back within one shot. Really turned things on its head. Skadoodle once again going aggressive. You mentioned how interesting of a spot oh. that was. The blades take care of Skadoodle. Yeah, the flick just not fast enough, not strong enough. And now Skadoodle will sit this one out dazed. Need support from AZK to play this 50. They see, okay, off shot, all right. All right, well, Skadoodle's dead, so no one's playing the 50. Psych, that's the wrong number. They only find one, though. AZK will fall, but Brax is on the site, and Brax is here to play. That's the case. Here's one come through, and back out again, down to the 2v2. They're going to hightail this spike either out of here with the TP. It tells us it's going to be the C site, and now T1 are going to have to play retake with Sean hightailing it over towards that C site. Yeah, Gluman is going to be able to get the spike down. Sean slowly getting his way over there, but as you mentioned, he's going to have to hightail it. There they see that the resources have arrived. And Gluman and the rest of Genji both playing off 
the site. You see them hanging out over in Cubby. Cover the spike is planted that way, so if something goes sideways, they can peek. They've got the ping, so they can shoot it out. This is a good setup for Gen.G here. Smoke down, spike is ticking. You see that it's accelerated, which means T1 need to get involved. That's gonna be the tap. We'll see how long they can provide support here for Spider. He's up to half. Oh no. It's starting no to take. Way. Pros don't think. They don't. They just their way in. And with their raw skill, they determine the, the outcome and the pace. Days trying to escape the Hunter's Fury. We'll see if he gets tagged up again. He will. That's going to be Mikael answering back for that last Hunter's Fury. Now the site's controlled. Smokes are down. Utility is down. T1 are stuck once again in a dry retake scenario against Gen.G. Well, it was really interesting. Skadoodle started with the Operator on C and then rotated back towards A. And sure enough, as he was rotating away, Gen.G used the Hunter's Fury to get onto the site. By the time he was able to pull back, it was too late. The site, the spike was down. Remember, folks, this is also like a, a weird gun round for T1. They've got a couple of Phantoms and Operators, but then they have two pistols the rest of the way. They don't have full guns to work with and that you presume that that's going to give him the disadvantage, but AZK looking to tip the scales back in favor of T1 as he gets one. It's going to drop down to a 3v2, however, still in favor of Gen.G. The clock continues to go down. Gen.G in control. T1 rotate away. The spike is going to go off and Gen.G are going to take a two-round lead. Yeah, I don't know what T1 can do to stop this, this Seaside hit. They didn't really have a whole lot of presence. Unfortunately for T1, they're going to be incredibly late to the party. Look at how nobody's moved. They're not sold on this site hit yet. And rightfully so, Gen.T have been faking quite a bit. But at least Brax wow. is going to find an opening pick. Oh my goodness, that is not something you want to happen. Daze is waiting in yellow. The smoke will subside. Oh, oh Wind cannot land that shot either. That is such a bad start. And Daze finds a pick. Of course, it will be Spider. traded out in kind, but it's down to two final players. Sean and company. Sean's going to find one. The shock dart takes him down to 65. A Skimon will start to wrap all the way back around. They've got membership on the site. The spike is ticking. But Gimon is coming in from behind. Brax is going to spot him out. And now it's down to the 2v2. Days will trade him. One for one for one for one. And guess who wins? It's T1. Both Omens were on flank positions there. You saw Spider use his ult to get smack dab. Good job of stopping this push from coming out. They're going to funnel their way in. Spider is there. He's going to get diced up and taken out. Brax, however, is able to trade that back as members of T1 begin to rotate over onto the C oh. site. But by the time they get there, there's no one left. AZK is going to join the party late. The damage has been done. Gen G with firm control of the site and the spike is down. They're going to retreat to their post plants. Two down C long or well, one down all the way down C long. Sean's going to be a bit closer. You've got Mikael, who's going to be close by. Excuse me, player one is going to be close by as well. The Empress has been used. AZK severely outnumbered here and taken out. Difficult for Genji to take. In fact, I think every time they tried to go there, it was skadoodle all day. And we're looking at this 4K as well. The Ace, actually, sorry. But every time Genji hit the C site, T T1 did not have a lot of success holding it down. Does tag one player up, so they know that something's wrong here, but they've got a crossfire set up. Wynn hasn't gotten involved yet. He's just trying to hold on, but they see the shoulder. And Spider now going to start to wrap around. The A site should be quite clear to take, but they back away, finding a pick onto player one. And considering Spider has gotten so much ground on the C site, they can just wrap their resources back over. A flawless round is far from what Genji would have wanted, but that stack around that entryway into the sewers or into banana really just did not work out well for Gen.G. They got spotted out by Hedwig and and when uh, he should have just swung there. Just, they, there was, there was, obviously they were going to spot him out. And now T1 just going to have to deal with this A side hit and I'd imagine that's where T1 are going to head end up heading over to most often than not. I don't think they're exactly comfortable with the C side hit but there's a lot that we don't know I'm just making assumptions based on how they've played these early rounds. There's a good assumption. Win and player one are able to take left. care of two members of T1. We mentioned Gen G with firepower this time around, and it's going about as well as you would expect. T1 down to two members left. Yeah, they've managed to get onto the site. At this point, they're looking for the credits spike to get planted. the spike down. As outnumbered as they are, they've got some weapons to work with. The Bulldog certainly bites there as it takes out Mikael but it's going to be traded back. Just one member left. 
on the side of T1, and it stays in a corner. He was paranoia. The paranoia wore off, and the bullets did not. Puimon gets the best of him. Jan yeah, this is actually a good look for T1. They still have all of their members remaining. Yeah, it's the eco, but this is not bad because they get the credits for the spike plant, and they're going to get the loss bonus. That's ultimately what they wanted to try to tr get their own momentum. Uh, uh, momentum. Uh, momentum. A combined yeah. momentum with exactly pendulum. That's, uh, that's a new word. And uh, Brax is looking for a new word to find out how he found the Frenzy Frags. Skadoodle finds a second. It's down to three for Gen G. Things are not looking so hot. The paranoia is going to make things worse. It's all down to Mikael. This round slipped away completely. The thrifty. So the members coming in from Seelong are about to feel a world of pain. Skadoodle's going to be one of those. But as Wynn tries to escape, once again, he finds himself at the mercy of a couple of bullets. The spike now being planted. Gen G in the retake, and this is one of the first times that we've seen this gun round versus gun round retake for Gen G. The spike's been planted. Let's see how they retake the site. You just like what Gen G was doing, T1 get the spike down, and then they back off further down. Cubby, they have three members down there, and one last one on the site. Wuman has been taken out. You've got two members of Gen G who are gonna be rotating around from the defending side. So keep a close eye on that. Meanwhile, ideally, you're getting Mikael, who's going to be pushing in from the attacking side at the same time. Sean is able to take care of one of the anchors as Kumon takes care of the other one as well. Spider's one of the last ones standing. The Rolling Thunder's used. Spider trying to stay oh. alive. Somehow, oh. is able to win that fight. He dropped things down to one one He's got the Phantom and he collides. Side of Gen G, there's nothing that's being risked. There's no aggressive play that's happening there. There's nobody pushing up. Jeez, there's nobody pushing up a long win with a huge opening pick on today's. That's what they needed. And T1 were just trying to make sure that the B site was a possibility and the it's fact really that Win is able to take out Days means it's no longer a possibility. But this time, considering Spider hasn't done a lot of work to push up the C site and Genji have a lot of presence there, they can only imagine it's going to be the A site, right? 30 if Spider left. starts to poke his head in and, and, you know, they trade one for one, then the question becomes, will they hit the C site? But the fact that he's not there and the fact that they haven't gathered a lot of information, this A site's about to come in fast. Yeah, Sean is able to get one, but he gets traded out. Mikael and win both initial anchors what? here for Brax against three. Are you kidding me? He's managed to stop the defenses. The members of Ginger are going to have to rotate over, but by the time they show up, the spike is going to be down. Guimond's going to be the first one there as player one begins to rotate over as well. There's nobody coming in behind them. Player one and Guimond, and Guimond both have to focus on the site here, but they're outnumbered, Simo. They may want to save the weapons. The economy is not going to be amazing. I think they should be able to at least be relatively competitive moving into the next one, but they don't want to slip away. One Player one hops in, almost finds the frag. It's all down to Guimont, and they will lose. Oh, no. This is the, this is the room. It's no! the and Skadoodle punishes it. Oh, my goodness. If you had paid attention to how Genji set up that round, Quinn was ready to do the sewers play. That's where he was going to set up. But the tactical pause, they put three members in the courtyard for Gen G. They wanted to take out Skadoodle early. Guess what they didn't do? Skadoodle is still alive, unharmed, and Wynn will have to watch his team 5v4 from the sidelines. T1 in a power play position to close this map out. Oh man, AZK just got the Rolling Thunder as well. Things are piling up against Gen G more and more as every second passes. An early look down C Long. Then they begin to rotate away, but they got the orb that they were looking for. It looks like this may be a piece onto A the entire time as we see Brax has been sitting there waiting to see if anyone's going to push up aggressively down A. As we have seen time and time again, this time not the case. Oh baby, this one's going down on A. There's a lot of time left, 30 seconds. 30 seconds Not left. enough time, I think, to uh, hightail it over towards the C site. Smokes are down. Mikael is going to need to call the reinforcements soon as the site is going to be wide open for T1. Shock darts won't injure Spider. And now it is up to how T1 wants to play this. They've got a lot of membership towards that long side. It isn't plant. Well, I mean, it's technically planted for long because it's the default plant spot. But Genji are gonna have to work their way in. 
Day is playing in short, needs to be careful as player one is starting to creep his way up towards A. The rest of the members of Genji begin to funnel in. Shantae would get an important opening pick, but AZK trades it right back out on the flank. There's no additional pressure being coming in from any other side. It's just it. They're going to start to defuse it, and the Rolling Thunder comes in, but Sean manages to dodge it. Day is able to pick oh! them apart, though, as he gets two. The Blade server is there. Sean with three. I don't know that he's going to have enough time. Ladies and gentlemen, it might not matter. It's coming down to a 1v1. Sean does it, but it does not matter. T1 eliminate.